हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ सचिन राठौड़ वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मेकैनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम वॉल्चिन स्टॉप टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर सो प्रीवियसली वी हैड सीन द रोलिंग कॉन्टैक्ट बेरिंग पार्ट वन पार्ट टू सो इन दैट वी हैड सीन हाउ द रोलिंग बेरिंग आर क्लासिफाइड अकॉर्डिंग टू द टाइप ऑफ द लोड देन वी हैड सीन हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द स्टैटिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बेरिंग now in this session we are going to see how to find out the dynamic load acting on the bearing so the learning outcome of this session is the students will able or the learner will able to design the equation for the dynamic load capacity of the rolling contact bearing so you can think about this what is in by fatigue failure just you can pause this video and recall the फटिक फेल्यूर विच ऑलरेडी वी हेड सीन इन द मशीन डिजाइन वन ओके सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस फिगर सो इन दैट यू आर गेटिंग द कंसेप्ट ऑफ द फटिक फेल्यूर सो हियर द शाफ्ट अराउंड द शाफ्ट वी आर माउंटिंग द बेरिंग टू रिड्यूस द फ्रिक्शन एंड टू सपोर्ट द शाफ्ट इज अ मेन फंक्शन ऑफ दिस बेरिंग so if you observe this when it is going to in the working condition the shaft is going to rotate by certain rpm so due to the rotation of the shaft the continuously the cyclic load is going to acts on the bearing so this is nothing but your the varying load or the fluctuating load is going to act on the bearing so your the bearing is under the fatigue failure so for finding the fatigue failure or the dynamic load dynamic load is nothing but the load which is going to act during the motion or during the rotation of the shaft that we are going to find out so for finding that you should know what is the life of the bearing the ball and the roller of the bearing are subjected to the variable loads which are repeated for large number of the cycle in its life so uh, already we have seen the diagram or the figure of the bearing in which the load is going to act continuously in cycle hence we can call the bearing are subjected to the fatigue failure so the life of the individual ball bearings is defined as the number of revolutions or the hours of the service at given constant speed which the bearing runs before the first sign of the fatigue cracks in the balls or the races okay so if you observe this figure in that the first sign of the crack of this ball is going to occur so before to that whatever the bearing will get survive that is nothing but the life of an individual ball bearing so the definition uh, they had given us like this the bearing runs before the first sign uh, of the fatigue cracks of the balls or the races so since it is impossible or the difficult to predict the uh, find out the life of the single bearing so we can define the life in terms of the statistical average life of a group of the bearing next one is the rated life of the bearing the rated life of the group of the ad uh, apparently identical ball bearing is defined as the number of revolution that 90% of the bearing will complete or exceed before the first sign of the fatigue crack means only uh, we can consider that only the 10% of the bearing is at the point of your the failure then we can get what are the life of that bearing that is a rated life of the bearing the rated life of the bearing in the catalog it is known by the letter l10 life or b10 life the life of the individual ball bearing may be uh, different from the rated life of the bearing because in the individual ball bearing life we have to identify for the single bearing single uh, ball bearing and in the rated life we have considering the 90% of the bearing or the group of the bearing so statistically the average life l50 in which the 50% of the group of the bearing will complete or exceed and it is approximately 5 times the rated life or l10 life now we will see the dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing it is denoted by the letter capital c so in previous session we had seen uh, the static load carrying capacity of the bearing and it is indicating by the letter c not 
so it is found that if the load acting on the bearing is increases the life of the bearing decreases so we had seen this concept in the previous session hence the load carrying capacity of the bearing is always associated with the certain expected fatigue life so you should know how to calculate the fatigue life of the bearing the dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing is defined as the radial load in the radial bearing or the thrust load in the thrust bearing that can carry carried by 90% of the bearing of the identical bearing for minimum life of 1 million revolution so by considering these things means based on your the rated life you have to calculate the dynamic load carrying capacity of the bearing so you can pause this video and you can think about this you can think on which factor your the rated life is calculating which factor is affecting on the rated life of the bearing okay so the next weight is a equivalent bearing load for finding the life of the bearing or the rated life of the bearing you should know the load acting on the bearing so as we are knowing there are the two forces are going to act on the bearing one is the radial load another one is the thrust load so based on these two loads we have to find out the equivalent load on the bearing so the radial and the thrust component acting on the bearing needs to be converted into the equivalent hypothetical load to fulfillment of the conditions applied to the dynamic load carrying capacity so as we are knowing there are the two component is going to act on the bearing one is a radial and another is a thrust load so we have to consider that we have to convert the radial and the thrust load which will fulfillment of the condition of the applied dynamic load so we will see how to convert that radial and the uh, thrust load component into the equivalent load carrying capacity of the bearing so the equivalent dynamic load is defined as the constant radial load in the radial bearing or the thrust load in the thrust bearing which if applied to the bearing would gives the same life as that which the bearing will attain the under the actual conditions of the forces so we will see the expression for finding the equivalent load carrying capacity or equivalent bearing load that it is indicating by the letter p suffix e p suffix e is equal to x v f r plus y f a where p is nothing but the equivalent dynamic load in newton f r and f a are the radial and the axial load which is going to act on the bearing where the x and y are the radial and the thrust factor that factor we have to consider because for finding the equivalent load it is not like that only the radial and the axial forces are going to act that we have to consider but simultaneously the other effect we have to consider that's why x and y are the radial and the thrust factor we have to consider for finding the equivalent load and v is a rest rotation factor so that is depending upon your which race is going to rotate that we are knowing there are the two races are there one is inner race another one is outer race so if the inner race is rotated and the outer race is stationary at that times we have to consider v is equal to 1 and if your the outer race is rotates and the inner race is stationary at that time we have to consider v is equal to 1.2 so this is the expression for the for finding the equivalent bearing load so uh, load life relationship is given by the equation l10 is equal to c divided by pe raised to k where l10 is nothing but the rated life of the bearing c is nothing but dynamic load acting on the bearing pe is nothing but the equivalent load k is nothing but the constant which is nothing but is equal to 3 for the ball bearing and k is equal to 10 by 3 for the roller bearing so just rearranging this equation the dynamic load is obtained by but our all the ultimate aim to find out the dynamic load acting on the bearing the dynamic load acting on the bearing just we have to rearrange this equations so you will get the dynamic load c is equal to equivalent load pe into rated life of the bearing l10 rest to 1 by k 
therefore c is equal to p into l 10 raised to 1 by 3 just we are putting for the deep groove ball bearing k is equal to 3 we are getting this relation for the ball bearing just we are replacing the value of the k as a 3 and for the roller bearing we have to replace the k value as a 10 by 3 we will get the another relation that is a c is equal to p into l 10 raised to 3 by 10 this is the expression for finding the dynamic load for the ball bearing and the roller bearing so i have taken a reference as a baby bhandari book thank you